our dear friends and particularly our the great organizer comrade vijay ashokan of european periyar ambedkar comrades federation and the dignitaries who are participating today Ms. mr gary mcclan professor peter shalak professor satyapal professor anandi sharmaga sundaram and comrade prakash ambedkar and other friends vanakkam to everybody good morning to everybody this is a very good opportunity and i thank you all profusely for knowing about periyar and the role of the relevance of periyar in indian politics today and you know very well periyar is was not an individual it was an institution as very rightly pointed out our late lamented anna that anna has rightly pointed out he is an era an institution so now periyar and baba saheb ambedkar both of them have become our armory our ideological fight is going on there that armory armory is in very need of the hour that is why periyar's relevance in indian politics in social transformation is very much awaited by anybody throughout not only in india because periyar's perception is the whole world the human perception periyar is basically a humanist and a humanist loves all human beings he never discriminates periyar philosophy never discriminates he wants to humanize the human beings because everywhere human beings are dehumanized that is the problem baba saheb ambedkar and tandey periyar both sides of the same coin they are the double barrel gun for us at the present level that is why i am very happy that you are running a very good organization uniting all our ideological friends may i be congratulate you all and we bring good greetings from the land of periyar the land of social justice the land of social self respect land of equality land of rationality our dear friends and comrades periyar was as cute enough even when he entered public life not for politics not for any political gain if you go through the life of periyar he has resigned when we want to enter the public life he resigned 29 local posts and then entered the public life what for for social justice for the philosophy not to eat any political offices that is the very singularity and uniqueness of tande periyar and he was not a politician he never climbed like baba saheb ambedkar that he was not a social reform both of them are social revolutionaries they don't want mere transfer of power they want transformation of power to the depressed to the downtrodden to the suppressed and the oppressed to the dehumanized people that is why politics is a game but transformation and normally in the ordinary sense of the term politicians think of next election but periyar and baba saheb both of them being social revolutionaries great visionaries they thought about the future generation present and the future generations the elections may come and the elections may go of course the elections also count in a democracy but at the same time what is real power where the real power resides even under the constitution of india it very clearly says the sovereignty lies in the people so everywhere the sovereignty lies in the people so how to shape the people 
how the people must be made equalized and equality liberty equality fraternity these things are very important for humanity so they were particularly periyar self respect movement wanted to change the society at large and when there is inequality then he proved what is the reason for inequality and periyar and ambedkar if you analyze both of them they were not the persons who were treating the symptoms of the disease they went deep into the real causes what is the real causes what is the base how to destroy the germs so their approach is very scientific unless and until you go to the deep into the roots you cannot root out anything that is why yeah, they will have to they have undertaken a very great mission that mission is humanism and equality even will be surprised to know because how periyar is relevant now you will have to go back i am going i would i will be too pleased to take you back to 1924 he was in congress by this time he was working in congress there is a fight between the upper caste and those who want to have equal opportunities and equality equal treatment for everybody irrespective of caste irrespective of their, uh, anything birth but that was not the approach mr abdi even gandhi when seran madevi kurugulam where the young boys were trained for national aspiration they were discriminated and the upper caste boys the brahmins were treated special treatment the lower caste people the non brahmins the dravidians and others they were given a separate treatment on the pr separate the food this problem and completely burst out and when rajagopal acharya and all the brahmins and others in the congress i am telling about 1924 before we were born this is history and when there was a fight between that then dr vardhanayal naidu one of the doyen of the congress party and periyar people like periyar they took this matter to gandhi mohan das garamchand gandhi what was the solution so that he will uh, find a solution so his uh, idea was see look here you employ brahmin cooks then that was not accepted by periyar and vardhanayal naidu by that time when he was in congress he was astute enough to declare that if you want to have an inclusive society in india if you want to have the abolition of the caste and treatment of equal as brothers and sisters and in one community that's all that what should be done even that even earlier in 1924 i am quoting from the hindu centenary number book and there a social reform question which figured in the columns of the hindu in april 1925 was a controversy over the functioning of the tamil gurugula vidyalaya sheran madevi in chennai district conducted by vvs iyer one time revolutionary association bharathi and so on and so forth so he asked the truth that money and all this in speaking when it was there they referred to the gandhi gandhi ji as a uh, supplied that it must be done by a, a, a brahmin cooks and dr vardhanayal naidu was not satisfied with the arrangement as did not like the condition about employing brahmin cooks this was the solution he had suggested then during that period the periyar speaking i am quoting from the hindu page 337 speaking at a public meeting at salem in a local town in tamil nadu ev ramasam nayakar said by the time he was known it he was said they must settle kindly listen they must settle the brahmin question 
even while the brand british supremacy lasted otherwise they would have to suffer under the tyranny of what he called the brahminocracy he has completely coined the word as brahminocracy my our dear friend this is an august house i appeal to you whether that brahminocracy even after so much of nearly 95 years have passed and we had our in india we had our independent society a uh, independence 70 years whether there is equality of treatment it is in the constitution adumbrated but that was not in practice at all the caste shows its ugly head people are still demonized people are still fighting even to get buried a decent burial because of their birth they were denied even the burial ground this is the hard fact this is a stark reality and if you want to do away to create a new society a new social order periyar is relevant ambedkar is relevant they are our weapons they must be our weapons that is why we are happy that the politics even though periyar is not a politician even though ambedkar was not a politician politics rounds about their philosophy whether it is in east or north and south people the youths are now they are seized of the philosophy of periyar they see him periyar not as a symbol not as a statue but as a ideological weapon the ideological weapon is there that is why if we want to fight for the, our rights if we want to fight injustice if we want ignoby if we want to do away the indignity then we will have to fight for our self respect the only answer is periyar and periyar alone and ambedkar and ambedkar alone i am happy you are ceased of it and you know the present brahminocracy is still in india so indian politics needs periyar needs ambedkar because you take the supreme court of india judiciary if you take the parliament there are many number of upper caste people in spite of all these things because of the present regime and if you take the legislatures if you take the executive who are the people because who are the people it is nothing but bureaucrats who are the bureaucrats upper caste people so very rightly pointed out and four sword periyar has forced it very good very rightly brahminocracy a government of the brahmins for the brahmins and the by the brahmins by that he never meant any individual thing he meant about the philosophy what is the philosophy of brahmanism to put it very simply let me let us go to ambedkar and says both of them are the same idea see see ambedkar defines very beautifully if common man belongs to the servile class in india today has so fallen ambedkar speaks if the common man belongs to the servile class in india is today so fallen so degraded so devoid of hope and ambition it is entirely due to the brahmins and their philosophy the cardinal principles of this philosophy the philosophy of brahmanism were six baba saheb very rightly pointed out to use correct expression the techniques of suppression one graded inequality between the different classes two complete disarmament of the shudras and the untouchables complete ban on the education of the shudras and the untouchables total exclusion of the shudras and the untouchables from the places of power and authority complete prohibition against shudras and the untouchables acquiring property and complete subjugation and suppression of women so no social if you want to seek social justice if you want to get gender justice if you want to fight for human rights if you want to create a new society 
of a rational and social order if you want to give everything to everybody and distribute fair distribution to all and particularly those who are suffering a lot from thousands and thousands of years due to the tyranny of the caste system you will have to invoke periya invoke ambedkar that is the only answer even today the things have not changed once again the same thing in, in spite of it, in between that we have achieved many things but they want to put it on the vice versa because the reactionary forces have grabbed the power so in the indian politics periyar is the need periyar is a remedy periyar is a weapon and let me con- before i conclude this one let me remind you periyar has very rightly pointed out and indeed himself i never believed in physician cure as a person he himself told i am not a social reformer i want to demolish everything and destroy and construct new thing this section must be there before construction if you want to construct a new social order first of all destroy if you want to learn many things try to unlearn things that you are superstition so periyar is a multifaceted genius in the sense he has completely thought as a humanist and for gender justice for social justice for human rights and rationality to save democracy and secularism periyar is the only answer to bring a new approach in the political scene and scenario and to change the worst thing that happens that are the challenges now for that challenge periyar is the only answer we are happy that our youths have grabbed periyar and our youths in india have understood it particularly the tamil nadu whatever may be the uh, pricks whatever may be the pranks whatever may be the other things by the reactionary forces they are not carried away by that one the language issue in the rights issue in our many many cultural uh, uh, conquest we are able to see the periyar is the only weapon we could fight for that is why even other people even our ideological enemies are terribly afraid to hear the name of the periyar that is why i am very happy i wish they will have to find out the answer from this two day conference once again i congratulate on behalf of the periyar tontes and the periyarists it is a welcome move and once again we congratulate and offer our good greetings thank you very much